dusk in a city that doesn't stop. Not even at red lights. If you stop, then when you, you're running at an unnecessary risk. But you see, he'll stop, and everyone, everyone somehow finds the way. Arturo Samiento says he runs the red because in crime-wracked Caracas, to stop is to be a target. I love it. We're about to jump another one now, but you know, you've got to be careful about it. But there's a sense it's just as much about the reckless pursuit of a good time. In Venezuela, few can afford it, but plenty party. The chase for the high life is unstoppable, and the most potent symbol of high living sits with ice in the bottom of a glass. To me, it's almost unreal how people will spend disproportionate amounts of their income on alcohol and partying. And unreal and profitable. Arturo Samiento came home from his British education with an inkling to import Scotch whiskey. His first deal made him a fortune. At home, in the leather of one of his two luxury cars, the 29-year-old takes us around the night spots that make him his money. It's a very restaurant society. People go and we'll have a meal. You see there's a couple here arriving. It's 11, it's 11 p.m. They're arriving at a restaurant. You'll always have an excuse to go out and eat and drink. Business, fun, whatever. Fabiana Bertolani and Arturo are a couple to be seen with. Que whisky está vendiendo? Around the whiskey bars of Caracas. Venezuelan people are definitely party people, friendly people, warm people, loving people. And Scotch drinkers, at least since the 70s when an oil boom brought extraordinary wealth from the West. When Venezuela was passing through its most prosperous times in the 1970s, uh, Scotch was the international uh, drink of status. And at that time, Venezuelans adopted not only Scotch, but, but expensive Scotch, deluxe Scotch, 12-year-old Scotch. And that, uh, that tradition has continued for the last 30 years and grown Melbourne-born Peter Hall admits he has one of the world's easiest jobs, marketing whiskey in Venezuela. <laughs> any, any excuses, OK. Salud. Salud, salud. A country that spends $220 million a year importing the stuff. People, people know 20 brands. You can stop someone in the street and they can name you 15 to 20 brands of Scotch whiskey. Venezuela is, um, in terms of deluxe scotches, the highest per capita consumption in the world of 12-year-old and above, so the finest scotch whiskies. Wonderful whiskey, but never too good to stick your finger in it. Stir your finger around there, yeah? Uh, so it's, it's more emotion just on the surface rather than... Yeah, it's, it's on the surface. <laughs> and then once you're done, ah, it's too uh, heavy. Yeah, I'll be drinking. That's the best part. If you ever see anyone doing that, you know he'd be better as But the whiskey phenomenon is more than odd, it's remarkable, given how few in Venezuela can afford to drink from the top shelf. Travel to the suburbs where most of the city's six million live and the spin-offs of the oil boom vanish. 80% of Venezuelans are in poverty or close to it. You will go to uh, a poor family's uh, wedding or First Communion or Baptism and you will see 12-year-old uh, scotch being consumed as an extreme sacrifice by that family for a, for a special occasion. Whiskey defies wealth, yet at times signals it. Muy importante porque este, eso significa como un estatus. 26-year-old Venezuelan Lorena Infante, who just married whiskey promoter Peter Hall, 
says the drink is key to dating in Caracas. Sí, yo diría que sí la están interpretando dependiendo de su trago de whisky y más cuando el hombre consume depende de qué año es el whisky también. Hay muchos hombres aquí en Venezuela que quizás por conquistar a la mujer tratan de comprar el whisky 18 años, si pueden más, mucho mejor para que impresionar a la mujer. Here the sexes battle around a bottle in other ways. There's the pushers. You see the girl in the miniskirt? Yeah. That's whiskey pushing. Or she'll be pushing some kind of liquor. It doesn't, it's a brand loyalty thing. Right. So if you turn up to a restaurant that they may not be offering your specific brand, how do you get someone to switch brands? Put a beautiful woman in front of them that says, why don't you drink this whiskey? And it still works. It gets, it gets volume. Um, we think that it tends to uh, not create any long-term loyalty for a brand, really. We're going to try and pop in here. Look, it looks fairly busy. This is somewhere that, um, that is heavily promoted by whiskey. In here, they buy scotch a bottle at a time for $200. <laughs> Wealth on display, as much conspicuous consumption as enjoying a drink. You very, very rarely see people falling over drunk. Uh, that is considered uh, the worst. In many other markets, it's faded, not in the bars of Caracas. Here, Scotch whiskey remains the drink of status.